Well, here we are again, um, Luke and I together, to uh, have another discussion. This one is going to be very much more discussion. I'm going to admit up front that I don't have any notes. Um, uh, Luke has uh, done some work for us just as far as uh, framing it. But let me just uh, share with you um, what we're going to be talking about um, today. <clears throat> one of the things that uh, Luke and I have done over the past uh, couple months at least, um, and, and probably a lot longer, we've had discussions about um, what is happening uh, in the world around us with the pandemic, but specifically with uh, uh, questions or comments that are being made and actions done uh, around, the, around the subject of persecution. Um, so we have some churches that are, are really concerned about uh, the restrictions that are being imposed. And uh, so different churches have responded in different ways. And I'm getting uh, comments, um, questions, just about how we uh, should be responding. And actually most of it seems to be uh, just comments towards me about um, their opinions. And, um, and so I just kind of thought it would be helpful for... Uh, for Luke and I to have a discussion and uh, for you guys to have the opportunity to um, sit in and listen so that you have an idea of where uh, Luke and I are on, the, on this issue. So, um, Luke, I guess I just want to start then. Uh, you've been watching the news as much as I have. Um, mm -hmm. So, we've got, what, Trinity? Uh, just outside of Heidelberg or yeah. right near Heidelberg. Yeah. Um, we've got the guy out in Elmer and we have... Uh, What's the guy's name in Edmonton? James Coates. James Coates. He's the guy that did jail for did jail. Had jail time for a bit. Okay. And then there's the guy in uh, Calgary. Yes, um, I don't know his name, but yeah, yeah, he's another guy. Okay. So what is your take on all this? So we've got churches that are responding and they're they're being told they can't have church and yeah. they are. What do you think? Yeah, well I mean, so I've said before to you I made the comment I think, but I have heard um, from other um, things that I've seen that there are there are churches going two ways about it. Like some are some are meeting and some are more public about it, and and maybe some have come into the into the public eye by accident, and others maybe on purpose. Um, it seems like the guy in Elmer was a bit more on purpose. Uh, and then there's other churches that I that I know of that are meeting but are more secretive about it and aren't really telling and aren't uh, broadcasting it for reasons that they you know obviously they don't maybe don't want to be in the news. Um, so there is, there's two different ways even there of going about it, as far as even churches that are gathering. Um, but really it's, it, yeah, it's a matter of, of those two things. Are, are we going to gather in person or are we not? Are we going to obey the governments, uh, what they're asking us or, or are we going to not? And it sounds like to me, like, like my understanding of what's kind of going on, at least just in the things that I've heard is like the main argument for, okay, we're going to gather is because... We, because the government does not um, decide for the church how the church is supposed to worship Jesus, right? And that's I think that's pretty accurate in, in stating you know why some of these churches are doing it is because they don't take their cues from the government. We don't ask them, you know, when it's okay for us to do things related to our faith, uh, and so that's I think why they're choosing to meet instead of not. And then there's other churches that are saying, you know, because of uh, the restrictions and the virus and everything, uh, we are, for a time, we're willing and, a, and to obey the government and, and to follow the rules and the mandates that they're asking us. Um, and so there's really like a clash of, of two different opinions and some that, that way heavier on one side are going to meet and the others are, are not going to. And then it, get, it just kind of blows up, you know, when one thinks the other should be maybe doing what or, or interpreting understanding and acting on their beliefs the same way as the other one is, and that's where the, the rub is kind of in. Right. Okay. Well, what I'm hearing you saying, and this is what this is the way I'm seeing things, at least in the news, is um, there's really two ways to look at this. One is this is um, persecution. So the, the government restrictions is a, is a form of persecution on the church. And, and hopefully we'll get into some of that. The, the other, perhaps the other way to see it, and, and I think it's kind of the way you alluded to just now, is you said um, you said that it's uh, the church not wanting to take direction from the government on how they should worship or what the church should look like as far as how it functions. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. So, so to me, then there's really the two issues, and and I actually like framing the discussion that way because to me, um, it's it's actually very helpful and moves us forward. 
on, on the one hand, I'll, I'll just say it out there then, um, I'm not so sure I see it as religious persecution, but I think that there's a big discussion that could be had on the role of government. Yeah. Um, what would your take be on that comment? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can see... Uh... So that yeah, we'll maybe deal with the first one. Um, so I would I think I would agree with you to a certain degree there that it's not religious persecution. Um, in one sense, uh, it's not religious persecution if we compare it to what we're seeing in other parts of the world. So when you look at China, when you look at, at communism, when you look at uh, Nazi Germany, it's not that kind of persecution. It's not a physical persecution. Like for sure, it's not. Right. We're not being persecuted in that way. We're also um, I would I would concede that we're not being centered out, um, so I don't think that church that the governments are saying you know oh you guys are Christians no we don't want you to do this we don't want you to meet I so I I don't think we're being centered out but I but I don't think that that's the only requirement for persecution I don't I think there's more to persecution than just being centered out okay uh, and that's where I think I, I guess that's where I would say it is persecution. In the sense that, okay, yeah, we're not being centered out, but um, but we are being, um, we, we are suffering, we are being um, uh, held back, or uh, how would you say it, like, um, well, even being pushed to the to the outside of society, right? Like Christian Christianity definitely is in that sense, or religion is, not just right. Christianity, but right. all forms of faith are being pushed out uh, and, and saying that they're not important, and so... Those things I do think are persecution, and just like, but that was happening before. That, well, that was exactly, yeah. exactly. And okay. COVID has just amplified that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I would say for sure that that we, in that sense, we've been persecuted before that, and and we, I think we often think of it, and, and I've done it before too, and we we thank God that we're not suffering the same way that other Christians are, and we and we just look at persecution as a physical persecution. Um, but there are other there are other elements, right? Just a world that does not um, that opposes you just for your beliefs, even though they're not going to be physical. But I have a hard time thinking that it could get physical in North America when we pride, when we pride ourselves on not right on not letting those things happen, right? With the with the Black Lives Matter movement and everything, it's like right. if it gets physical against a religion, I just I don't know how it gets there because we. We won't. We don't allow that to happen in any other injustice, right? Right. So, part of me, when you know, so maybe it's going to be a different kind of persecution. Maybe it won't be, but um, but certainly we're being restricted in some ways outside of the physical, but <coughs> in in the spiritual and the mental, we are. But right. Well, see, for me, the persecution thing, and <clears throat> you and I, you've I, you've heard me talk a little bit about this, and I know I've shared this from the pulpit years ago um, when I was. Uh, um, younger than you are now, I went to Cuba, and <clears throat> my experience there was uh, the church was being singled out. Yeah. Uh, what what the church experienced was different than the rest of the country, and that was in, those were the days of, of uh, uh, um, Fidel Castro. Uh, it was before the Berlin Wall fell, yeah. and and when I was down there, we saw the church, and there were guys standing outside representing the government, trying to figure out who was in the building. And then also the, the building was falling apart, like not literally crumbling, but you know the, the one specific thing was the pastor wanted paint to paint the walls. Well, the church couldn't get paint, but other places could get paint. And it's mm -hmm. like, to me, that's religious persecution. Yeah. And I don't see that mm -hmm. stuff happening now. But on a general level, yeah, in Cuba back then, there was a, <clears throat> there was a government um, oppression you know, you felt the pressure of the government on you. Um, and right now, like... Well, sure. Non-Christians, we can... <clears throat> like non-Christians, right. feel that oppression right now. Right, so that's why I draw a distinction between the role of government on a broader scale versus is this particularly religious persecution. Um, <clears throat> you know, is, is there religious persecution specific to COVID? Uh, you alluded to it just earlier. You, you know... We talk about, um, you know, how free are we to speak about subjects like abortion? How free are we to speak about subjects like uh, gender? Um, and Which all those things, I would say, would be a form of persecution. Yeah. Because Paul, in, or Paul and Peter in Acts 5, they were like, you can't preach the gospel, right? That's what they said to them. He said, stop preaching the gospel. Right. And then they went out and said, we're not going to do that. And they went and did it, right? That would be the same thing. Stop preaching what the Bible says about homosexuality and gender and abortion. 
and okay. we're saying no. It, I, so I would see that as a form of it, but not obviously a different form. Okay, so so then my question then is, okay, it sounds to me like we and I sort of agree on, on some of that. So what do we think about the churches themselves? Have they made the right call? Like, would you make the same decision? <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's, that's where, um, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, so the biggest thing maybe for me, listening to all of the different sides and stuff, uh, I do feel very much like I'm stuck in the middle uh, in some regards. Like there's some things about the church that I mean that I'm really like, yeah, you know, I, I can agree with you. I, I, I don't think the government should be telling. Like when you look at um, the church's meeting and when you look at, uh, when you isolate the things that have happened to the church as far as, okay, getting fined for meeting or um, some guys, a couple guys in, in Waterloo getting fined for doing open air evangelism. If you isolate those, to me, it sounds like like you. They have a very legitimate case. Like when, what, what uh, world would you live in where you can get told or fined for evangelizing or fined for going to church on Sunday? And then the question becomes: Does COVID justify those actions and those okay. fines? That's now, what. Pause for a sec because I'm not sure that like I had never heard that before. Yeah. That there were guys recently that were out doing street evangelism. Yeah, and what was they were fined for um, for being out <coughs> being outside for a non-essential reason. Okay. Um, so not for gathering a crowd, but for just being out uh, doing something that wasn't considered essential. Okay. And that's why they were fined. Okay. So they, I guess they should have been getting groceries or. Yeah. Or sorry. Whatever. Okay. Sorry. But anyways, they were fined for that, and so, and yeah. So with that's that being said, the, the yeah the fact that the the government can say hey this is a non-essential reason to be outside well you know, take religion out of it, um, but I think that's where they've overstepped, if right. they can do that. And if a government can say, you can or can't meet, well, the question really is, are the measures, like, the, is the is COVID, does that justify what they're doing? And I, I, this is goes back to the James Coates thing in Alberta, where he's he's going to trial because he's trying to fight that, to have the government prove that, that some of the stuff that they're, that they're imposing with the restrictions and the lockdowns are legitimate, uh, as a form of, of kind of keeping back COVID and, and helping deal with it. So that's really then what it boils down to is, is it does COVID justify what we're being asked to do as believers, as, you know, shutting down churches and stuff. That's really what it comes down to. Um, and so when, so that's where we've had the rub of, okay, some people will say, some Christians will say, hey, it's a 99% chance that you're going to survive and be fine. And right. there's just, a, a, and there's some people that will get it really bad. So they're saying because it's so high that of a chance that you're going to survive and be fine with it, we're going to continue meeting because it's not that high of a risk. Okay. And then there's others that are saying, well, for a time, I can put off gathering together in person and meeting in groups where viruses tend to spread, even though it has it hasn't spread that much in churches because we are taking a lot of the protocols and we're putting them in place. But they're saying for a time we can set it aside. We can set aside gathering together to love our neighbors and our communities and not spread the virus. Right. Right. And that's right. really the two options you're left with. Yeah. So, and so when I hear you ask me that question, that's really, to me, that's what you're asking me, Luke, do you think the virus is not the big a deal in the sense that we should be able to gather or do you, or, or do you land on the side of loving, loving your neighbor? I'm not saying either one is not, not loving their neighbor. Cause I think there's a valid point to be made that in opening the church, you are loving your neighbor because you're providing for the, greatest need, which is a spiritual need that people have. Right. Um, so I think both sides can be loving their neighbor while you're gathering or not. So this, you can see there's so many moving balls here, right? And then, yeah. and then you get into the whole government being, oh, well, we've got a Roman 13, we need to obey the government. So then there, that comes back into it. So, um, so I would certainly, I think the dialogue needs to be there as far as like, what are we going to do? But at right. the end of the day, I think it's a conscience thing, right? So, okay. so uh, if the Lord really you know, is convicting and challenging some people to to open their doors and provide for those needs then okay I can see why and if they and if some of us are feeling like hey we want to be um, shut we want to shut down and stay and stay online and, and mitigate the spreading then both of you take your freedoms and, and do that right and don't uh, right. and don't um, polarize it with each other okay so it sounds to me like you really haven't Kind of made a final call, like if, no, I don't, I don't if, have any either. Yeah, if, if you were to be totally flying solo here at Alma and you had to make the call, it sounds to me like you'd want more of a discussion just yeah. to kind of get the implications. I mean, I would lean towards the <clears throat> let's get together, but that's 
but that could be that's for many different reasons. But I'd probably lean towards that. Right. Um, but I wouldn't want to just. I wouldn't want to do it the way that there's other churches are doing it. I'll say okay. That. Well, if I'm hearing you right, and I think there is a point to be made that um, it, loving um, takes so many different forms. And when we talk about the mental health of people, we talk about the people losing jobs, we talk about uh, the grief that people are experiencing, um, there's definitely a place that the church um, can can engage. Yeah. Um, so, so to me there's yeah. that. But I would have to admit that um, I, you, you almost stated exactly the way I would want to state it, and the wording to me is very significant. Um, I've, I've kind of worked this through in my own mind quite a bit, and, and what I say is, is that I am willing to um, hold back on some of those um, freedoms for a season on the premise that I am uh, helping to curb or um, force to hold back people getting sick and dying. So if some of those criteria start to fall apart, then I, my decision starts to change. So if, if it turns out that... Um, uh, and I'm not a doctor, but if I'm reading the news, the social distancing apparently helps, and mm -hmm. the masks supposedly help. But Coates is apparently challenging that. Like, yeah. And so, yeah. so if, if it turns out that that stuff is, is, is not valid, that our not having church is not saving lives, well, now, that, now we're entering a different discussion. And also, uh, the, the, the point of for a season, um, if this is forever now, uh, now we want. I want to have a difference. Of, I want to have a conversation because I'm not comfortable with shutting the church down forever, and and so this leads into I think another issue which you've raised before. Um, and, and it's really the question of at what point do we uh, challenge the government when it comes to our rights as a church? Yeah. So. Yeah, and even to add to what you were saying there too, I would agree with, with what you're saying there as far as for a season, for a time. The only thing, so my pushback is simply, or what I've been considering is, okay, yeah, this virus is new. It, we're all reacting to it for the first time, kind of. It's it's like a flu virus, so it's easy to take a cavalier approach and it's easy to take a, 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 to take a very like you know worried freaked out because this is a new thing and it's killing people it's, right. it's easy to go both sides um, I would feel more comfortable if if it was more of a deadly virus than 99% that's where I struggle with it it's like yeah. I don't I don't think the number justifies that's but that's just me that's just an opinion um, but uh, but no you bring up a good thing about you know where does government intervention and where does that all play and um, and you have Romans 13 and the Bible seems to say obey governing authorities um, but the Bible also says that uh, if the Bible tells you to do something that God command not to do something that God commands that you're to do what God commands not what the, what the government's command um, so I don't so yeah it's a matter of uh, again it kind of comes down to conscience a little bit there I think anyways where um, some people see this as the government is saying to the church, you cannot gather. Right. You cannot right. meet in person. And people are saying, well, the whole, like the definition of, of church and ecclesia and gathering is that we are physically gathered together in a, in a location. Right. So they're saying, you're telling us we can't do that. That is something that God's commanded us to do. We need to do that. Okay. Well, I had somebody tell me just a couple of weeks ago um, that... And, and this is directly in line with this discussion, uh, this this focal point of the discussion, that if we don't say something now, five years from now, it's going to be too late. But the restrictions that are in now, you know, my thing about a first season, that um, that if we don't say something now, that, that, well, why didn't you say something? Because five years from now, what, what are your thoughts it's on that? It's too late to go back. Yeah, no, that's that's where I was thinking. Actually, when you said our rights, I've really wrestled with with it here. I I, I really don't like hearing Christians parade around their rights. Uh, I know Paul used his rights in in Acts when he said when they, when he was being arrested and, and he said I'm a Roman citizen. And they're like, well, we can't do this to you, right? And he said I'm a Roman citizen. You you need to give me a fair trial. So he, Paul took advantage of his rights, but you don't ever see him waving them around like 
you can't do this, get away from me, these are my rights, these, like, yeah. and, and the Bible tells us clearly that our citizenship is not in heaven, or right. sorry, not on earth, it's in heaven, right? right. So we are, we are aliens here. So right. part of me, part of me, and this is where I internally I'm wrestling with it myself, because part of me says, hey, I'm not even, this isn't my home, so why am I trying to set it up? Like, this is, like, make it all comfortable for me and get me my rights and make sure they're... But at the same time, it, I'm reading through Bonhoeffer right now, and if I was a Jew, like, I would want to be like, guys, I have a right to live. I have a right yeah. to be a, a human being on this planet. Right. So so I don't have an answer for you there, but uh, I don't think. But I, I, I just think we need to land somewhere in the middle where we, we understand we're not citizens here and, and the rights that we have that are privileged, but they're not guaranteed. Right. And they're not something that we. I don't think that we need to, um, to be adamant about. But at the same time, if there weren't people fighting for our religious freedoms right now, and uh, and that kind of thing, then I mean, I, I'm grateful for them too. So I don't sure. know. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Now, with respect to Paul, it, it, you're right. He did talk about rights. And in fact, um, what I recall from the text is is that he actually identified himself as a Roman citizen, uh, thereby allowing him. Uh, a more thorough hearing. Yeah. Um, he didn't have to do that, yeah. so no. so that helped his case. Um, but you know, one of the things that um, that I'm struggling with is that uh, some of the decisions that are being made by churches to to move forward, and I, I think that there is an underlying discussion to talk about, and, and I, I really like that the, the statement that goes along the lines of. Um, we should be focusing on freedoms and, and not so much on equality because the more freedom we get, the more equality we'll end up with. Yeah. But we seem so uh, focused on, on equal rights and, and we're, we've lost this perspective of freedoms. Now, th th there's a nuance there that I, maybe not everybody's going to catch um, because I haven't articulated it, but what I'm really thinking is this, that if there's a discussion to be had about... Um, voicing the concern about government persecution on the church, and maybe that's not the, but on, on, on the society as a whole, I, I get the desire to do it now. Um, what my really big concern is, okay, first off, I don't think it's religious persecution, I think it's a general concern, you know, should we be spending $350 billion, billion dollar deficits, you know, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But more importantly to me is how to go about it. You know, the, the scriptures talk about, and in particular, I'm thinking of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says that, you know, um, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. And, and, and so I sit there and I go, are these individuals that have been put into the news, is that righteousness? And, and, and I think there's an argument to be made that well, they would certainly say it is, but I'm not sure that, like, for instance, the guy in Calgary, um, calling people Nazis, you know, that when the people come in and, and mm -hmm. to me, that doesn't represent me. I don't think that that's a fair statement. You know, we're told to um, bless those that persecute us. Uh, we're told to pray for those that persecute us. That's, that doesn't fit into that category for me. So, so the, some of the people that are, are kind of in the news, they don't, I have a hard time saying that they represent me and, and, and I, I've been wanting to distance myself from some of these actions. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on some of that? Yeah, I, certainly some of them are. Uh, I, I don't. I, I don't want to pretend like I know all the details either, um, and, and and can judge you know their motives. But at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of the same boat as you. Is they're, they're definitely. I don't want to make. I wouldn't want to make a spectacle about it. Um, as far as you know, those things go. But but being persecuted for righteousness' sake, like what does it mean to be? To be righteous, like does that mean that, you know, that I am? Uh, if it's if it's in my heart, I'm I'm following as best as I can what God has called me to do. Well, if it looks like if it looks to the world like it's like that's unrighteous, well then, I mean I don't think that's for us to to say maybe necessarily. And so, yeah, the churches that are gathering, like well, I think it's honoring what they're doing in the sense that they they're upholding their uh, desire to gather together as believers. Yeah, that's is that righteous. I mean, yeah, it just, it's a matter of, okay, well then does, it, is COVID justify us not? And so I don't want to, I wouldn't want to make judgments on it, but I think it does depend on the, per, like on the, really on the heart of it. And, but, and the, with the way you go to bed, right? Like you said, are, are you rubbing in their face? Are you saying government, you guys have, you know, you guys have no rights? Are you saying, you know, are you calling them Nazis? Are you, 
Are you, well, that are comment, you is that the right thing to do to call somebody an Aussie? Me? No, there's, there's yeah. a better way to go. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, so that's how I would answer that. And, and I thought of one verse, uh, 2 Timothy 3.12, it says, All who desire to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. And this is a thought that just challenged, has challenged me living in the North American culture. Um, and it's this idea that, okay, if the Bible, cl the Bible clearly tells us that we are to expect to be persecuted and we are expected, like that's what was written in uh, Timothy, uh, Jesus says it, right, and Jesus even says your, your family's going to hate you and he tells you to bear, to pick up your cross, right, so to be willing to die for me, like that's, that sounds like persecution. So we're, we're supposed to expect it and then Timothy says everyone who desires to be to live a godly life, as in to, to live for Christ, should expect persecution. And then I have to ask, okay, well, if I don't, if I'm not feeling persecuted or oppressed or anything like that, then am I really living faithfully to God? Like, if I don't okay. feel, if I'm living here, and I'm not saying, and this is where persecution is not just physical, it's right. mental, spiritual. If, if everywhere I go, no, no pushback, nothing, no oppression, no persecution. Then am I really living according to what the Bible says? Because the Bible says if I want, to, if I'm living a godly life, right. then I'm going to be. I should expect it. Right. I, you know, and that's where I think we take those stands on abortion and, and homosexuality and all this stuff, and that's a form of oppression because we're living, we're we're living according to God's word, and and the culture doesn't like it because right. they don't agree with it. Right. So yeah, the cross is an offense. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's the exactly. And Paul says that, right? Yeah. So, so well, like I just look at it and I go, um, some of the things that these guys are doing just seem very polarizing. That um, the the way they've gone about it has has just caused the rhetoric to lift to a level that has made me uncomfortable. Yeah. And I look at the story of Daniel. Um, he was persecuted. You know, he was he was. Uh, he was taken, and um, and and he was told he couldn't do certain things, and um, so to me, I just look at that as an example of you know how to function, and I think about um, just the idea currently of missionaries in the world that are trying to plant churches. They don't have a church to go to, so what do they do? Well, they worship privately on their own. There are times when we have to find us well when we will find ourselves not have to we will find ourselves isolated and. Um, and so for a season, I, I kind of get that. But I think what I'm really concerned about, and just kind of bringing it all around, I, I'm not comfortable with the rhetoric. Um, and, mm -hmm. and to me, um, I think that some of the things that people have done uh, in the, some of these guys that are in the news, it's been polarizing. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I just, I would want to say that I'm just really grateful that um, you and I have been able to um, really have a lengthy discussion it's not just this mm -hmm. one and and I don't have this sense of uh, anger towards you or hurt or whatever um, you know your thoughts on the on the yeah. larger discussion How no, I agree yeah I agree with you there and I think the only thing we, I would go back circle back to for me is the, is the conscience thing I think we just need to allow grace for each other and that goes into the rhetoric but um, allow each other to have to land in different spots based on their conscience and not say, uh, and, and not call them, you know, non-Christians or, uh, or, or whatever for, for either disobeying or for obeying. Um, you know, so some people will say you're spineless if you're not willing to meet, and others are saying, well, you know, is your faith real and all this stuff. So I would just say we allow each other to have, to, to uh, be settled in their conscience as far as what they're doing. Right. Um, and because you can faithfully follow Jesus with you know online you can uh, experience the presence of God online I'm not going to say that that's normal and that's something we should all be doing all the time but I'm saying you can like you've said for a time yeah. we can do that yeah. um, so so allow each other some grace in that and, uh, and to disagree and then um, the, the trick is just a matter of at some point we you know you have to take a stand right and that's what I almost had to say this is what we're going to do right we can't all just go and necessarily do our own thing at some point we have to and, and we've I think been pretty clear about where that is obviously in, in the way that we're going about things um, so then we have grace with each other right, right. If, if I'd rather be meeting or rather not be um, you know we we're still brothers and sisters and it's good that we've been talking about unity in Ephesians because sure. you know it's it's a witness to the world our unity so yeah, yeah. it's going to come up this Sunday yeah uh, so. diversity uh, unity and in, in the midst of yeah. diversity so yeah